are calling the meeting to order. An agenda, review agenda and adopt the agenda. Anybody agree to that? Then no questions, we'll move forward. Uh, did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes and approve the minutes from our last meeting on June 13? I didn't catch the approval on the agenda. Oh. Do we yeah. need a motion for that? Can we have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda as Can presented. Can get a second? Second. And all in favor say aye. 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 So pass. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now do you approve uh, of the, the approval of the minutes of June 13, 2023 meeting? I move we approve the agenda or the uh, minutes of the June 13th meeting. A second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 So move. So approve. Um, that was quick. Moving on, public comment. Is he will be here. He was in here earlier, okay. so he should be coming back in. <laughs> and there's any other public input that you got from from the public? I did not receive any other input. Quiet is always good. <laughs> you want me to go find him? Remind him. Sure. I'm not sure. But you want to jump to the next item first and come back. Right. I'll give the public input. Go ahead. The best set. Book sale in Minnesota <laughs> will be July 27th through the 30th at the Shaska Library. Oh, I thought That's you were going to say the Watertown. Welcome, Taylor. <laughs> Watertown. This, com this competition, sure yeah. <laughs> I, I almost took a job in Watertown. It was in South Dakota. Isn't that driving to the ends of the earth? I thought I was in the wrong place because the building from the outside looks smaller. <laughs> It says a gym, but I don't see a gym. And then, like, it was like straight down the hall. I was like, oh, okay, never mind. I got it. <laughs> Last time I ended up at a bar, I remember that. That was not yeah, a good time. I, <laughs> I had to go in, and then they carded me, and I was like, I'm not here for real. So sorry. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. What are the dates for the sale? The best book? 27th okay. of July through the 30th. Is that the River okay. City Day? And all outside again? Yeah. The 30th will be a bag sale. Okay. I think $5 and you get a bag and you yeah. can fill it in. Or $7 and you get two bags. Oh, <laughs> what a bargain. What a deal. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what we're going to try in September. <laughs> oh, tell me. We don't compete. <laughs> <laughs> Last day free. <laughs> free. Can't beat free though. Give them a bag. Free in the bag. Do you give a bag? Get them out the door. We're doing bag sale the second to the last day. <laughs> that sounds like a clearance sale to me. <laughs> As someone who's been on Amazon Prime too much today. Did you buy anything today? Just things that were already in my save for later list. Oh. I didn't. I was tempted to buy that 43 inch TV for 100 bucks. You don't know. Oh, thank you. My sincere apologies. Uh, right at 420, or 429, my fire chief gave me a call. So I was about to head in and then a call us out. It was my fire chief. Like, I probably should take this one. So <laughs> have we gotten a me on the. We have. So. On the agenda. Okay, so we'll, we'll do some sharing here. Split between here. We can pass it around. Oh no, this is this is full service at the city. Here. <laughs> is there one for everywhere? You, want to you gotta split them up. Okay. Um, so. We'll share it again. I gave it over. We gave it over. All right. Yep. Yeah, you do there. You do, and then. Okay. And you guys like hanging out together anyway. Occasionally. <laughs> so just wanted to give a quick overview at some of the stuff that's been going on in Mayor here lately. So put together a little slideshow, uh, then printed it off. I wasn't sure if I would have a projector or not, but this both works. So um, let's go through a handful of projects we've got here. So right out back here, this is Old School House Park. This is where we've got a lot of action going on here mm -hmm. as far as park projects. 
And the first one that we've been working on is the park pavilion. If you came into here and you saw a partially dismantled structure, mm -hmm. um, that, part, that pavilion has been in the work for several years now to provide bathrooms and uh, shelter space. Um, there, so that's going to be three park, uh, three bathrooms and an equipment room. Construction began last year and it was due to finish this year. If you flip to the next page with uh, the picture on there. This was a very nice picture that we took in uh, probably February of this year. It was very close to completion. And then if you flip to the next page, that was March. Oh. <clears throat> We were going for some of that campfire uh, rustic look to the building, but I think we applied a little too much fire. Uh, so it was a, it was a Sunday uh, afternoon, and I got a phone call on my cell phone from our, our sheriff's deputy, uh, Brad Hendricks. And I thought to myself, there's no good reason why my sheriff deputy is calling me on a Sunday. So picked up the phone and he said, Nick, uh, the pavilion's on fire. Um, <laughs> So I raced into town, and the fire department was, I had already put it out. It was very nice, uh, very quick response. Uh, but as you can see there, caught on fire. What had happened is, is um, the contractors had some propane. You can see the propane tank okay. right there. They had some propane heaters in there. They were warming the interior so they could do concrete floor work, right. get that done. They had batted some insulation up into the ceiling, and it was a particularly windy Sunday morning. Right, came in at the right angle through the rafters, pushed some of the insulation down right onto the heater and <laughs> took it. So right now, the contract, uh, it's the builder's risk, the city's not on the hook for it, but the uh, contractor's insurance company is telling the contractor that it was, there was a bunch of cracks that formed, um, and the insurance company is saying that was due to settlement, not fire damage. So. The contractor's <laughs> fighting with his own insurance company at the moment. Uh, they've been a really good contractor, so I don't want to mm -hmm. put them out because I'd like them to bid on future projects. Who uh, are they? Uh, project One. I mean, your contractor? Yeah, Project One is the name of the company. Mm -hmm. okay. They've been really good to work with, so I'm not pushing them too hard. Obviously, we want to have this done yet this year. Right. Um, so that, that's the latest update on that. <laughs> The reason why the pavilion was getting built, one, bathroom's good, park shelters are great, but on the back side of the building there was an equipment room. And the pavilion had to come first because the big dream for mayor was to have a splash pad mm -hmm. that was connected right to it. And that began design here in 2022 uh, with the equipment room in the back, so we need the pavilion to kind of get done first before we could connect up all the equipment. Um, so flip the page, go to the, uh, the park here. Mm. So we put in a grant application to the DNR Outdoor Recreation Grant Program. And there you can see an overview of the old schoolhouse facilities that are right outside the back door here. And we can see City Halls, so we're right there, kind of in, uh, just outside of the red border. And so the splash pad will connect to the pavilion on the north side, as you can see there. We're also going to be doing some trail improvements. Uh, the areas in yellow are going to be trail reconstructions and trail additions to complete our network within Old School House Park. It'll make the park ADA compliant um, uh, so we can have access accessibility to all the features, not just the splash pad. Then you flip to the next page on that. And this is final design concept for the splash pad. <clears throat> you can see we've got the pavilion in there. The, tree, the, the kind of the background stuff is kind of... Uh, contractor fill-in. One of the uh, zoom outs on the floor level, you can see skyscrapers in the background, so we all joke, well, we know where mayor's going in the near future. Uh, but the, you can see the pavilions right there, that'll be that, and it'll be connected right to it, so the bathroom access, all of that. Uh, the splash pad is 60 feet in diameter, it'll have the limestone seating around it. Those are all the play features which were selected to go in there. And two weeks ago, on Friday, we were told that we did get the grant. So we will be moving forward with this project. All things hope go well. We're planning to have this completed by the time snow flies this year, ready for next spring mm -hmm. start up. <clears throat> On some of the more uh, basic stuff that we're looking at doing, we're planning to do some, uh, a large chunk of street maintenance, about 45, 50% of the streets are gonna get some form of maintenance. They'll either get a mill and overlay or they'll get some seal coatings. Oh, I'm a big proponent mm -hmm. of uh, street maintenance, so I like to make sure they stay up and good. Uh, don't much care for potholes and things of that nature. So on the next page here, 
with the map. This is the scope of the work that we're looking at doing. The areas in yellow are the seal coating, so that's where they put down the tack coat and they throw the granite fines on there, and then you know that gets on your vehicle and it gets really annoying and you gotta go to the car wash to get it off. Uh, and then the areas in blue and the orange are the areas we're gonna do a mill overlay, and that's where they grind off that top layer. Right. Uh, they do some base work corrections and they throw the throw the uh, a new layer on top. So you can see we got about 45-ish percent of the city that's going to get some mm. work in some form of another. So that's exciting. I mean, street, streets are fresh, travelable, uh, walkable, bikeable, all that fun stuff. Um, on the housing end of things, uh, we just had the Coldwater Crossing 8th edition open up. That uh, uh, opened up in 2022. Uh, they're finalizing sidewalks right now. But uh, on the map end of this, it's in the top uh, right corner there. You can kind of see the uh, dirt work on the aerial map. So it's this up in here. And that opened up 32 new uh, single family housing lots. I know that that's just for like Chanhassen and Chaska. That's just a Tuesday opening up 32 lots. For mayor, it's pretty decent here. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> So we've, we're already getting houses built up in there, so that's uh, nice to see uh, expansions in that way. And then next, uh, one thing we're pretty proud of is we worked out uh, with Ridgeview Ambulance Service to have them base out at our fire hall. So uh, we got them in there, we had an office that were open, we had a couple extra bays, and we gave them one of the bays to house their ALS rig, and then one of the office spaces where they could home base out of. So we're really excited about that. They get to pair well with our fire and rescue. Uh, that'll mean better collaboration on that, better service to our citizens and those in the area, reducing those um, response times for those in our area. So just good, uh, good collaborative event overall. We don't charge them any rent. We want them to be a service to our community, not having to charge more than needed. Uh, so far, it seems to be going well. well. They moved in, I think it was a couple of months ago. They moved in. I just talked with the ambulance director, and things seem to be going pretty well. So the next page there, that's uh, it's a picture of the fire hall. Uh, they, they're inhabiting that middle office right in there on that, and then they've got one of the end bays where they have their rig in. And then on the economic development front, a little stuff that is happening is, we well, you saw in that past picture, we built the new fire hall. That was completed in 2022. Uh, we have the old fire hall, which is currently inhabited by Public Works, and that is slated to be sold in uh, November of 2023. We're building a new addition to our, our Public Works building to make that transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're selling that to a local developer, and he's going to be uh, turning that into five commercial lease spaces. Uh, so on the next page there, you can see a picture of the existing fire hall. And then on the next page after that, the preliminary exterior design concepts for what it'll look like. Uh. So he's going to split that up, uh, take out the front doors, put in glass windows, and then he'll split it up into five commercial leasable spaces. Um, we applied for the Carver County CDA Community Development Grant on that, and we've received notification that we're recommended for funding on that, which was really nice of them to do. So we're hoping this gets done in the next couple of years. It'll be one of the nicer buildings in town. <laughs> and then lastly, we talked about the Public Works having to move out of the fire station, so we're building them in addition to onto their, one of their existing buildings. So that's located on Shimcor, down by the fire station, down by the water tower. Um, designed in 2022, it'll be an 80 by 60 addition onto the existing building. And that should be completed by October of this year. They're actually pouring the concrete floors right now on it. So on the page, this is a preliminary concept that we had there. And this was just as the, the next one here is when they were just getting started on the construction. And then the one after that was taken earlier today. <laughs> So they got walls are up, roof is on, there they're pouring go. the floors right now, and um, then they have to get the electrical all, or so, all, sort, all sorted out, and then it'll be good to go on that. And that's a little taste of things happening in there. Any questions I can field on anything? So those new, new housing, the residential housing, are yep. they from people from outside, outside of Mayer coming in, or are they just someone moving from within Mayer to those new houses? Usually it's for outside coming in. Right. I mean, if somebody in Mayer wants to move there, they certainly can, but typically we see outside moving in. Okay.
to those. What is the population of Mayor now? Uh, a bit over 2,500. Mm -hmm. I think on the census we were just under 2,500, but we've been adding homes of population since 2020, so I'd say 25, 2,600 mm -hmm. on that order. Is, is mostly those people like working from home kind of a scenario that they that I'm not too sure about. So I started with mayor in October of last year. Right. So I don't quite have that demographic data down quite yet. Well, how is the connectivity here from <coughs> the internet and bandwidth standpoint? Oh, uh, we have um, uh, gigabit service in town, so pretty good. I know they're just coming out with the 10G stuff, but I've got 1G where I'm at. and That's uh, plenty. That's <laughs> plenty. So they have pretty good connectivity here. Any other questions I can field? Where were you before? So before here, I was with the city of Fairfax. My, my journey is westward, eastward. Okay. And uh, I'd like to make mayor the last place I stay. Mm -hmm. uh, I started, I started my career in 2010 out in Canby, way out in southwest Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, you could throw a rock and hit South Dakota. We were nine miles <laughs> off the South Dakota border. Let's have a good arm. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but it was really good to go to South Dakota for fireworks and uh, bars in the evening, too. I knew how to do it right. Um, from uh, Canby, I went down to Marshall for a year. What I thought I wanted in life was the bigger and better towns, and then I got the bigger and better in towns, and then I decided, no, that's really not what I wanted to do. Um, I went to 100% people management style of stuff, oh. and I like to have my fingers in the weeds. Like I said, I, I wrote the grant for the splash pad. I like having that in the weed stuff. I was there at the table when we were doing uh, the infrastructure work, the street stuff, the public works building. I just, I don't micromanage. I just like to be a part of that to help and do what's best. That's my angle on it. So I was in Marshall for a year, parted ways, and then I was in Fairfax for five years, uh, and then uh, came to mayor. And my motto was, um, if I leave city limits and I can't see corn and soybean fields, I've gone too far east. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is about as east as I'd like to go. Although it's fun visiting the, the eastern cities, but I like, I like the, uh, the rural nature of things. Tends to be where I'm you at. You might get to see the northern lights from here on Thursday. Oh, really? Yeah. What time are they really? supposed to come out? Starting at 10. Ooh. But yeah. You might, the uh, uh, mayor may swallow 5,000 people that night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Chan will be able to see that. Well, I want to thank you guys for choosing mayor and coming to the site. We're happy to have you. If there's anything else we can do for you guys, uh, please let us know. Do you get a lot of comments about a library here? Or what? Uh, actually, I was going to toss that out. At some point, is uh, maybe we want to look at a planning process for down the road to having a full-fledged library mm -hmm. when the population warrants it. Mm -hmm. So I think as mayor continues to grow, at some point it would be wonderful to have a full library here. Are you up to date on the high school in terms of their enrollment? Is that Mayor Lutheran? Yeah. I okay. don't have those numbers right okay. offhand. I know uh, this upcoming term, they are adding middle school classes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They have the capacity, the internal capacity to do so. So yeah. it's going to branch out to a middle and high school. Yeah. Which is awesome. They're a great community partner. I've been working with them yeah. on various things, and they're wonderful to have in town. Mm -hmm. I was in the reserves for several years, and I knew. General Ray Camp from Marshall, Partition. I imagine he was pretty active. I don't believe no. I had the opportunity or the pleasure to meet him. No. Okay. You, I was just there for a year, so okay. I got to meet some people, but that name didn't doesn't come to mind. Good guy. Thanks for putting the time into this. I don't know if you yeah, deliver this nice. much, but I appreciate it. It's a good perspective. We don't make it to mayor much. Looks like, uh, I was just looking at it, 2040 projections or you'll be just short of 3,000 people, which is 20% uh, like growth. At 20 per, uh, 2040, I think we can beat that. I think so too. <laughs> I think we can beat that. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, thank you guys for coming out. And if there's anything we can do for you, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mike. Take care. Thank you. Okay, so next, next action item is the policy review.
So last month, um, you all had some great discussion about uh, the library board bylaws and brought forth some, some great questions. Um, and so I've noted a few edits in red, um, a couple um, that I can just share a little bit about. One, I know one question that we wanted addressed was certainly uh, the student uh, representative or youth representative that we have as part of the library board. So noting that, um, I made in that section one, I have a suggested edit for that to account for the youth representative. Um, and later in the document, there's a couple points. Since this is a non-voting um, role, we want to make sure that that clarity maintains throughout the rest of the document in the language. Um, and then the other note um, or edit that I added, and you'll, I would invite some discussion about that, um, was the meetings of the library board may also be conducted by interactive technology according to Minnesota open meeting law. Um, and that um, is something that <clears throat> since we've had opportunities now where we have switched to a hybrid model or virtual, um, whether you want to incorporate that language or um, to include that. Um, I know the, the board, the commissioners have that in their um, guidelines for their meetings. Um, the one thing to note about that um, is if you do opt to, uh, if someone's south for the winter and opts for a hybrid model or asks for a hybrid model, um, the meeting law, I believe, states that then their um, location has to be uh, disclosed, has to be a public, like you'd have to be in a public space potentially. Uh. Um, or uh, I think an option might be that someone could connect, and Commissioner Uderman, you might be able to speak to this, could connect, but then they wouldn't be able to vote, or you know, they could listen in and um, participate in discussion, but not potentially vote at yeah. that meeting. I so. had that happen when I was in Arizona. I had to be public, and it was posted. And then I also had it happen where somebody was trying to dial into MELSA, and they could participate, but they didn't have their place posted three days in advance. And it only really mattered if there was enough people that meet criteria for quorum. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so singly you could do that. Yep, yep. So we posted three days in advance. I could vote if it was within the three days or you moved to your location. Um, <laughs> it, it, and it might make a difference if you're right on the fringe of something that's a hot topic or if you don't have enough people. Right. So just wanted to make you all aware of that, that that's um, mm -hmm. part of the, the language, that's part of that um, statute. So, um, and certainly that was all different you know, through the pandemic and even after for a time that the governor signed off on. And so that's why we were able to have some different approaches at that point. So, um, so the three days notice then if there was a blizzard. Yeah, that would mean. Then you mean not have three days. To cancel the meeting. The meeting would have to be canceled in that case. Three days ahead, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. For the minutes, there was a phrase you would use that was something interactive. Interactive technology. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's exactly how it's worded in the statute. Yep, and that's yep. why I asked. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. So it gets, yeah, a little <laughs> complicated with some of that. <laughs> so where did you go for a public space? Uh, we contact, I was actually in Surprise, Arizona. I wanted to meet with them anyway, because in 1990, a little tangent, 1990 they had 7,700 residents, and now they have 150,000. So I wanted to connect with them on the growth trajectory, because we're experiencing not that level, but infrastructure and other stuff. So I was supposed to meet with the city manager anyway, and they're like, we'll just carve out a spot in the coffee shop. So they had two people waiting for me, <laughs> and they're like, we are taking you to your coffee shop. I'm like, make sure that door's open so anybody can come inside, because I'm sure they're going to want to be part of this. <laughs> so, uh, I think a lot of places, municipalities, if you give them enough notice, they're willing to make arrangements. I don't know if you've ever had anybody request from our libraries, but I make arrangements. I go to the library. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we end up doing or a library tour afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, I think it sounds good. I think it's good to maybe have that flexibility. Yeah. For now that we've gotten used to that possibility of being online. Mm -hmm. Especially since we could run into a quorum issue, uh, especially people traveling or not being present during the winter months. And a lot of people do that now, especially with uh, remote working. Right. Those of us who are beyond the ability to work. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
you know, we, we take off occasionally. <laughs> but you don't want a, a whole board of old people either. So. I, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why on me like say um, one non-voting youth representative will be appointed on a yearly basis. Is there a, I mean it's a term of one year, um, is there when the term starts? It's the it's January through the, December. December. Yeah, I did inquire. Um, and it would be the same if for the students. Mm -hmm. So that, but if a student is a senior going in, a senior for the spring semester, that person may not be around by fall. Mm -hmm. so that was my question. So how, how would they be able to commit one year? Another question on that, same issue. Uh, you know, we're limited to three three-year terms, consecutive terms. Uh, student is, is the one year and it says nothing about consecutive. And I would hope that with the one year term, you know, you get one year of experience, it'd be nice to capitalize on that. So, and I hate to add, say, well, it's gotta be a two year term. These are young folk, you know, things change. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Should we make it clear that that could be repeated, that they can be reappointed year after year, same person, uh, for as long as they're a student? And once they're no longer a student, then they become like us, they get the three-year limitation, that three-term, three-year limitation. That's a good question. And how do you define a student? If they're in college, you know, that was going to be, school, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So we could confine it to, uh, to, uh, oh, I don't know. What is, who, how would you define a student? Um, I mean, I know that we, we talked about too, like, if you're going to market it as being like you going into like, volunteer fairs in high school and having it be like a high school related activity, then I guess I would say a student would be someone in high school or I guess middle school, but probably high school. And then once you graduate, even if you're taking, I mean, even if you're doing college, then that would be like the cutoff for that. But I mean, I guess it kind of, I don't know, it would depend on how, how old you want people. I mean, if it's gonna be like a youth perspective and you have, I mean, like a 20 year old college student, that's still a youth perspective in some ways, but it's not like a high school. So I think what we're looking for is this, your point of view of the world is different than, our, than <laughs> certainly mine. <laughs> and I think that's important for the library to reflect that younger yeah. point of view. Mm -hmm. so. so did you just graduate? I did just graduate. So what are your plans? I am staying here mostly this next year, and okay. then after that, I'm going to a different state. So this is my last year. On okay, the board. but you're planning to continue on the board then until yeah, yeah, the end I'll of be, the year. I'll continue to get it. I got reappointed. So. Thank you. you got <laughs> well, so really you're should you this is your second year. I, mean, I reapplied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. She went through the reapplication process with um, the county. When but, no. but actually, your term wasn't going to end until December. Right? Right. Was your term ending in December? Was it an academic year? I think it was when I, because I didn't start in December, did I? I started in like the end of the fall. Mm -hmm. So I think it was like fall. Close to the end of fall. Yeah. Because yeah. that was when it was first put out, because that's like when I ended up being accepted. Okay. So yeah. yeah, that was my point. If it's January to December, I didn't get the reappointment thing. I don't know. I I think it's been a great idea that came up and a great addition, but you know, I think our challenge is gonna be to just, you know, find somebody every year to well, be part I'm, of this. What I'm thinking is if we somehow link it into I don't want to say a school, but you know, high school or high school equivalent because that's really the age group that we're looking for. Right. And then 
the term could be tied to whatever those institutions are, i.e., fall to spring. You know, fall until the following fall. It doesn't have to fall. be the same as the board. Pardon? It doesn't have to be the same as It doesn't voting be the same as ours yeah. or adults. That might actually be more practical. Yeah, See, I was, that I was thinking more of an academic year mm -hmm. yeah. rather than... And to me, having a... I wouldn't want to go lower than a junior or senior. I would like to see I want that. more of her. <laughs> what that? Oh, yeah. Well, we would like another if she has a sister, of course. <laughs> but I would like them to start in August and that we would start... We would find the candidate in April and then you would probably interview. If it's an open process, you might have three that you wish to interview. That would be the... Board, board of Commissioners, and then they would begin in August and they would end in June. And we are, of course, looking for someone who is a great advocate of our libraries <laughs> in their site, in the schools. Two years would work. Should we find a junior? That would be wonderful. You know, think about how much you learn the first year as an adult mm -hmm. board member. But also, we want their fresh ideas and their respective on uh, how are our resources, our activities, the programs we offered. And I, I think it's good to get a candidate that goes from high school to college because the way a high school student utilizes a library is significantly different from someone in college utilizing the library. They will see from a different perspective. They will use it because it's more academic driven. They are self-driven to do their program wells. In high school, you're more guided, right? So, so your utilization of the library will be quite, I know, I know it was different for me, but many years ago, but that was a different world. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I see it anyway. So just to speak practically, typically we'll start to try and recruit in November so that we've got a full, full boat when we appoint in January. And typically if somebody's starting high school year in September, that gives them a chance to get seated in their activities in their first month or two of school and think about this. So when we're hitting up the guidance counselors or the civics teachers or the government teachers, mm -hmm. it's an email or inter integration in, in November. Um, I, 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 the heart of it is to get more people like Tenley or people like Tenley in, in, integrated and in, in, um, uh, she has a peer on the uh, extension office that's going to turn out because she's heading to Indiana to go to college. Mm -hmm. And so it's not also, there's a level of flexibility. So when Michaela goes on to Indiana, uh, now I just got a note that says, hey, she's officially stepping down and we got to go do off cycle appointments, which is. 90% of our appointments happens in January. The balance of those happen in a fluid basis when something were to happen, mm -hmm. you know, if they wanted to move on. And then I think when she signed up, she agreed to find her replacement. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I will say that the muscle, the muscle just hasn't been built between county mm -hmm. and these school districts. And I know it's a challenge for even the city to do, to get, get young, young, young folks on these boards. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to continually build it. And I think Tenley and Michaela have been kind of an example of what, what's possible. There's also a great level of flexibility. Now, there's not an expectation that you come every single time or that you drive all the way out to mayor or whatever. There's a level of flexibility because we want to plant the seeds and maybe wherever you go next, you'll come back and you want to work for us. <laughs> um, that's a piece of the element, a piece of the equation too. So where do we stand with this? <laughs> I guess we leave it unchanged because the way um, Matt is saying is that when someone leaves, then they will start the cycle of mm -hmm. selection again and could be off cycle. That's my understanding. So, you know, if, if somebody does leave in the middle of the term, let's say they, in June, especially if we can have multiple, uh, they're appointed multiple times, the gain experience, so yeah, I guess. I mean, you can control. I guess I'll say life happens. People, and <laughs> you know, I, actually, it's you folks are the ones that started. You know, start the, the process of selecting people for it, for the board. Yeah. So, you know, whatever we do has to coordinate with your schedule. Yeah. I once heard that. Um, I mean, in the faith community, a pastor typically draws plus or minus 10 years their age, and our parish pastor is like 60, 65. So if you think it's 55 to 75, 
I'm the youngest one on our board, and so if you look at where we draw, plus or minus 10 years, mm -hmm. I think that after you've been on the board for a while, it's hard to find the bodies to fill a lot of these co uh, committees unless we're intentional about it. And so mm -hmm. my note back is, is not just to promote a seat on the library board, but extension and others, mm -hmm. and then invite those folks to come into the government center to um, to take a tour too. So it's like three birds with one stone that I just have to coordinate it as a single email for that, ci that, that civics teacher. Mm -hmm. And then I've only done it through District 112, Holy Family and Southwest Christian. They're all within the district I represent. But there's no reason that we can't recruit outside of those areas. You go to Minnetonka, which was not on the radar, and it is. There's a bunch of kids <laughs> that live in Carver County that, that go to there, but also the western suburbs, too, and I think that might be a good next step with the, maybe even for the, through the context that Bob has through the um, library card for all mm -hmm. efforts. Sure, mm -hmm. yep. And so I'll make a point to connect with him to say if he's already got the existing contacts at the schools where we'll find the appropriate contact. Yep. So I guess the only the only difference we would want here is make it clear that uh, there technically is no limit on the number of times uh, one of our non-voting members can be reappointed. So adding that into the, that yeah. language, one voting, one not voting will be appointed on a yearly basis and can yeah. be reappointed. Yeah, see, it, it, it isn't until the next paragraph that it talks about the three consecutive. And we. Oh, you want to say the second part is a voting board member may only, so then it automatically excludes the, the non voting one. Or we could have it the voting members are restricted to right. three consecutive terms right. and just leave it um, just moot voting. on yeah, the non voting. Just add the word voting members. on the second paragraph. Until we decide that we should have the young people voting also. That's my next one. Well, I know also part of the discussion we had talked about, you know, let's get this off the ground first. Mm -hmm. um, but I think sometimes when I said in the library board before being on the county board, it was also discussed that the benefit of the stipend that you guys all get to be here, your mileage and your whatnot, is probably more worthwhile in the hands of a, a youth as well. Mm -hmm. And so is there a way to, through the, through the Dolphin yeah. or someplace else, uh, offer Tenley or whoever comes behind her some form of a stipend to recognize their time here. I think initially we were like, oh, we're not going to make it part of the, like there was some legality. Mm -hmm. But it's worth considering, too, to say, all right, for the effort that's been put forth, is it a scholarship? Is it a stipend? Is it something um, to consider from our youth participants as well? Mm -hmm. Are we ready for a motion? Do we know what we're, we're, we're moving? The, this, the first paragraph is, stays exactly the way it's proposed. And the second paragraph, we add something that says, uh, uh, board member, uh, voting, voting board, board members. May not serve. W may, may not serve more than. Three consecutive and that, and then just leave it at that? Yeah. So I guess uh, with that, with that uh, amendment to that line on the second paragraph, can I have a motion to accept the um, policy? I move we accept uh, the, the by, uh, uh, library yeah, the board bylaws as, mo as, as modified, because it's not the same one, it's a new one. get a second motion? I'll second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Motion? Passed. Budget. Who's no. broke? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Unfinished uh, new business. Dalkey Grand Board. Uh, is it library? Who is going to be going for yes. that review? Correct. Mm -hmm. Do we have a lot of uh, submission yet? Or we got? They are not due until the fourth Friday of September. Okay. So this will be we'll be looking at meeting in October for the grant board. Who did it last year? James. I did the year before, I think. What did I do last year too? I think you did. Yeah. I think you did. did, did two last years. Year. Back and year. back. Yeah. To back. <laughs> I don't want to do it again. <laughs> It was good actually because you get to see the you get to read the document and you get to see you know what what people are envisioning to do um, and, and it was a good experience. I mean, I'm still I reminded of that one 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 submission that I, I always remember, which is it never dawned on me that you know past high school 
for people with uh, learning disability, what happens to them, right? And there are programs that will provide a continuing education for them to still progress because they may graduate high school at 18 years old, but their academics could still be only at grade six, right? It takes them a bit longer to get to grade 12. And that's, yeah, I thought that was an interesting uh, grant request on that, that item. All right, go ahead. No, so just looking to see. Um, so when is that meeting though? Uh, when, is the, when are we looking, what date is that um, review? We meeting? haven't set the review date yet. Do we have to make the decision today? Because what if the date doesn't work with whoever is agreeing to do it? We could, um, we could make a decision by the August meeting and then you all could accept because um, we'll have a couple of other members from um, organization, the Friends organizations, the friends, right. some other representatives that you'll all accept as the full board. So could, I can certainly um, settle on a date, let you all know, and then could decide by the, at our August meeting. That makes more sense, you think? Yeah, but I just want to clarify. Did you do it one year? I thought no. you did one year. Yeah, I did too. No, I didn't. I don't know. I'm surprised when you said you did I it was twice. traveling. I thought you did I think she had to yes, travel and then right. I, I, I right. stepped that's up right. and okay. I think... Um, okay. October. So we you are were again. supposed to do it before and you didn't get to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. you did it last year. That's, no, what, that's no, all I'm saying. I remember it was her and then I think last yeah. minute she couldn't make it okay. and I got called to step up. Say what the heck. So we'll discuss in August. Yes. Okay. I think that makes more sense because if you sub commit now and then the schedule date doesn't work with you, it's, it makes sense. Okay. Is this all a paper application or do you ever do like a two to three minute video of capturing what you want? Because there's a lot of personalities behind these requests and it amazes me that it would be interesting people to see do that. their regular job and then they want to go above and beyond and, and, and try and get these things done. I didn't know. It's still all paper application. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. I think it'd be nice if you can do video or they came and come and plead their case. That's and sometimes I... it'd be interesting to see that you know on paper it's very different from someone coming in and the passion have that yeah exactly the passion the commitment to that project. Of course, Has then any you proposal have proposal been rejected yet? No, we actually been really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Was, is there a the first time? I know. I think there was one that we had almost rejected. I think last last year, uh, because we, we 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 questioned it, but I think eventually we still let it go through. So the max request can go up to a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Per person. Total of all the grant applications. So there was the one year. applicant that could get up to hundred grand. Potentially, but yes. Mm -hmm. If that's the only one, or then it will. Yep. Supplant everybody else, I yep. guess. And it had to be a yeah, really good proposal, <laughs> too. I'm still waiting for the digital one. Is that one done, or is that planned for this year? Or um, I can speak to that now, sure. Yeah, so um, it's the snail's pace is the way I would describe the progress, and it has nothing to do with the um, the team members, the frontline staff, they've got their work done. Um, actually, Sunday I worked through the afternoon in order to get, move forward to risk management at the county. Um, the question and some options about how we would um, handle the um, waiver form. Okay, um, mm. and varying libraries that have done this project and handled this different ways. Mm. Some are just like no mention of at all. You bring a VHS tape in, plug it into our machine, gets chewed up, too bad, so sad. You know? And then others have these incredibly elaborate forms about personal... Copyright and, and things like that. Well, and all that stuff right. too. So at any rate, that had, the ball on that question had been in my court in order to um, then forward along what the team had developed um, with some of my notes to risk management. And so I moved that along. It, it would be interesting to see, because that was one of the things that we, we noted last year too, was that although we were looking at new grant requests, that there were grants from the previous year that hasn't been completed yet. Right. And it would be interesting to see coming into the next grant cycle, like and how many were submitted uh, last year or prior year that have been, some, that have been completed or are still pending 
uh, res completion or things like that. That would be interesting to, to just know at all. So we will get there. And I absolutely understand, you know, the um, excitement surrounding it and what's certainly also now a mix of frustration. Um, and, uh, and also knowing that we have some people right here sitting at this table who would likely bring in their VHS tapes or audio cassette tapes or whatever I in order to this. help us with some, some piloting and developing mm. of the instructions. Staff have already developed what they view as being some good instruction things, but um, we need to obviously test that out in a live situation with people. Um, so we've got friends members and we have library board members and we will tap you. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So I think that we got, we'll just revisit this in yep. August meeting. Sounds great. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. So let me finish. Um, we got number seven, administrative reports, uh, budget updates. Sure. Um, kind of right now, mid-year, we're at a kind of a quiet point, just kind of watching where we're at um, and kind of seeing how the rest of the year is going to shape out. Um, and we're still pretty quiet on the next um, budgeting planning process for 2024. That'll start to ramp up a little bit more here as we head into August. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that will be um, giving a report out on a look back into 2023 and 2022 and how that's been shaping out. So. Um, one uh, good good front that does start to is starting to slowly affect um, is our print budget for collection. Um, we're starting to see more shipments come in on a regular basis. I know we've talked about that the last couple months, um, and we had some really good conversations with our primary book vendor, and we're starting to see just more regular shipments now that we've been um, kind of expressed our concerns where we were at with it. That, um, we can't wait for all these things to come in at the, you know, the end of the year. We, we need to start seeing movement. So then working on with, with them on um, trying to acquire a certain quantity each week. In certain cases, like our Dulkey grant, our Lucky Day books, we've been putting in special requests to our vendor to say, can you, you know, pull these specific shipments and get them out to us? So it's been really good up in admin to start seeing um, our UPS driver come in with big bundles of boxes and <laughs> in the heat and he complains about it but we're so glad we cheer for him so um so that's good to start to see that um impact and start to see those invoices come through uh as always i will try to address any questions that anyone might have i was just curious and that's kind of me wearing a different hat here is that <laughs> this is a financial period of january to all july mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so it's at least should be full of August. July still is currently in July right now. Mm -hmm. So I would expect like closer to a fifty percent hit on your budget lines. On uh, I think what I call considered more fixed cost related items like salaries and things like that are pretty fixed. But you're hitting forty two percent. Is that the reason why? And that's because we've had vacancies. Okay. Quite a few mm -hmm. across the system between part time and. Um, and some full-time earlier in the year, and that certainly impacts that, definitely. And you'll see how that's affected our stock sub-budget um, is higher than it probably should be right now, too, because we've had to pull in more sub-hours to, to cover some of that as well. Um, so that'll be an area, you know, that we'll continue to watch. But that's, yeah, I think we're, we're pretty, pretty so okay. So you're not full-strength right now, basically, right. from a uh, FTE. Right, because we just... Um, like Chaska just hired two uh, part-time assistants, library assistants. Um, I know Chanhassen and Victoria are going through some recruiting, as well as the Western branches. I'm sure Paul and Patrick, if either of you want to weigh in on that end as well, you'd be welcome to. We have four concurrent, four vacancies concurrently. Mm -hmm. I was just going to make a slight remark. Like they are not paying you both the directors and the manager role. <laughs> <laughs> No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's all. That's all I have. But no, that, yeah. great question. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there a timeline for the Chaska director? So the posting just closed on Friday. Um, I just received the applications to review as of late yesterday afternoon. So 
hoping that by the end of the month we'll, we'll have at least first round interviews ready to roll. Big pool, small pool? Um, medium pool? Medium pool? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> but very anxious for, very anxious to fill that role, not only for myself, but for Chaska staff. I know for our management team, it'll be really, really mm -hmm. great to have that colleague come on board. So, will, will they be starting before the new library is finished? No. Vacancy <laughs> <laughs> <see> savings, Jim. <laughs> and then next, I think I guess is a library director's report. Yes. All right. I will just highlight a couple of items here. Um, one of the um, exciting things recently um, that I was fortunate to go along with as well, but we had three staff members that attended along with myself, the American Library Association Conference in Chicago. Um, fantastic conference with um, headline speakers. Um, a big theme that really carried through was intellectual freedom um, mm -hmm. and some of the book bannings that are happening across the nation. Um, and you know, along with that came speakers such as Judy Bloom. You probably on, recognize man. that um, name. Um, the <laughs> poet laureate Amanda Gorman was there. Um, oh, she, very good. She and, good. What's that? She good. She was fantastic. So very profound, but very um, accessible, very um, down to earth. So really interesting to listen to. Um, uh, I was able to shake hands and visit with the Librarian of Congress, Dr. Carla Hayden. So that was pretty, pretty uh, exciting. <clears throat> um, but just such an inspiring, I think, for all, all four of the staff that went um, to be surrounded by so much energy, so much education, so much author fandom. Uh, and then I, I was sharing um, just before the meeting just to meet face to face with some of our vendors because through the pandemic, um, and through some of the shifts that we've gone through to be able to just talk and have a conversation and meet, you know, oh, so-and-so that we've been emailing or having virtual calls with, I think is so helpful to continue to build those relationships. So um, our librarians that went, um, Sarah Nagel, Trisha Leck, and Lisa, Lisa German are all working on some uh, brief reports following that will get shared out to all staff. And I have intention of sharing that all with you at some point when those are completed. I think they all carried back some great, great tools in their uh, in their baskets. So excited to hear more about that. Um, we had some airline woes along ah. the way at the end of the travels, <laughs> but other than that, that. Is this an annual conference? That this is an goes annual to, conference. Or? Yep, that we usually okay. designate at least two staff that that okay. go to. So next year it's in San Diego. This one travels, and then every other year there's a public library association conference, okay. and that also rotates locations okay. um, that we do try to designate staff that attend as well. So, yeah. yeah. I was curious, can you give like one sentence about the general impact of AI on library? <laughs> or is it too complex? Uh, or how did you feel hearing that presentation? Well, I had started to hear that bubble up actually at, um, in our public services leadership team meeting at the county too about chat GTP mm -hmm. and um, how, uh, I mean, part of it I think that is from a county standpoint, the data privacy is going to be really scary to navigate with that because you have to be really careful what you plug into it, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, because then it's out there obviously. Um, and also just, I think it ties into the work of our librarians, reference librarians, and, um, mm -hmm. and helping patrons navigate legitimacy of things. Um, I think that plays a piece, so, yeah. yeah. TBD. You should mention, the RIS Minnesota Library has a conference every year. Correct. Right? No, I knew that. And all, all the board members are are entitled to go. Absolutely. And At it's least in, there. Last year it was in Duluth. But this year it's in St. Paul. So it will be more accessible for board members and staff to even just to head over for a one day experience with is it that. Closer so. to the end of the year, when is that? It, that is in early October. Second and third, I think. Mm -hmm. Or the third and fourth. Has the American Library Association Conference ever been in Minneapolis? Yes. Do you remember how long ago? I asked from the perspective of MELSA, and we're trying to figure out what our kind of identity is and what we're going to spend these additional dollars. 
and we're starting with what's the need and what function do they play. And we, there was an event recently, I think it was TeenCon. Teen Lit Con. Teen Lit Con, mm -hmm. a thousand people or less came. Wow. And I was like, is that our, is, sh should we be shooting for 10,000? Right, if we're gonna do this stuff, should, should a regional system be shooting for 10,000? And there's a lot of redundancy in the efforts that are doing. There's a tent that was hosted by Hennepin and then Mel said, hosted one right next door. I'm like, are we, are we redundant? Is there duplicacy? Duplic duplicity? So I guess I asked the question, the flavor of, is that a place where Melsa can make a bid for it to kind of keep us on the map? I know you'd want to go some, if I were you, I would want to go to San Diego or <laughs> the one in Hawaii, I might join that one. Staycation in Minneapolis. But Minneapolis, <laughs> and we have so much to offer and the convenience of the accessibility of the airport and getting to something. I didn't know if we had uh, bid on it or we need to bid on it, but it put it in my ears for, for a conversation with Melsa. One thing you may, as you talk about this with others is, um, I'm going to guess it was about <clears throat> 12 years ago that the PLA conference, the every other year um, one, had been in Minneapolis. Um, and I was working up in Kichigami, and we had no budget to be able to send anybody to any national level conference. I mean, it just was outside the question of a region that was that poor. Um, but we're able to load up a van of librarians and buzz down to Minneapolis for an, a one or two night stay at PLA. So, um, you know, it's, there is an advantage to it being local yeah. in terms of affordability. Um, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, that's why I asked about this because I thought, well, maybe we just went because it was in Chicago. It's a little big. You're probably able to take four people because it was in Chicago, mm -hmm. right? Versus San Diego. Right. <laughs> right. Has everybody heard of Amanda Gorman? Yeah. My daughter goes to Lockett Amy, and they did a painting and a reading and all this other stuff. And I think she has a book out and all these other mm -hmm. things. But she's isn't she the one that did her poetry at Obama's inauguration? Is that her claim to fame? Amanda Gorman. Or mm -hmm. Biden. Biden. Is it Biden? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get it mixed up. But did you get a selfie with her? I didn't manage that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I just take that one back to Brooklyn. So she has a new book, new picture book coming out. Um, so she and the artist were there. Cool. Um, and it was the first time they had met in person. Oh. So it was a very, it was a very interesting dynamic because they just worked collaboratively virtually and through email and all that. So yeah, it was great. That's cool. <laughs> So that's what I will share from my director's report. You're, you're able to digest the rest of it. Always welcome questions or comments. Absolutely. Thank you. Anything from Nick? Did he, since he's not here? Nope, nothing from Nick today. Thank you. So next on, we go on to the trustee and commissioner reports. Uh, on page one of my report is a nice picture from our Victoria Farmers Market outreach which uh, was staffed with a staff member and with a member of the Friends of the Victoria Library. And we'll do that three more times this year. On page five is a picture of Tegan, who is one of our 14, I'm sorry, 12 teen volunteers this summer. Uh, most of them are high school students. They are engaged in a variety of activities. Tegan with her brother hiding behind her behind the book stack is rearranging <laughs> of our vacation books in the teen area, in the children's area. And then uh, on page seven is a nice picture from our puzzle swap, um, which Linnea organized and shows you can have a nice program with a nice attendance of people of all ages and it not cost a single penny. So those are the three things I wanted to point out. I just have a question. Yeah. This Brodini guy, is, is he the same guy that's been doing this for like forever? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Faithful following. Because I remember my kids used to do that, and then eventually it goes, we can see that. <laughs> Dude, it was amazing. I was there. I saw it. With my own two eyes. <laughs> can I ask for the minutes, Patrick? What was the third item? There was some background noise that I didn't oh, hear. Sorry, the third item was the uh, uh, puzzle swap. Thank you. And then the uh, next one, I guess, will be um, Chaska Library. That's me again. <laughs> Till we get to the Chaska Library. All right. Um, 
You know, I, we're doing a lot of partnerships out in the community this summer, um, and we we did that intentionally with the road construction, of course. Um, so a couple things that I'll note, um, we've partnered with <clears throat> Public Health and District 112, they're doing a free produce market um, in town, and so Jennifer is making some visits out there with Story Walk and giving out, I think this, uh, I forget the date, but an upcoming date, she's gonna be giving out some books to families, um, doing some story times out there, so that's a really nice outreach piece. Um, she's also been out um, with Officer Julie doing some outreach story times uh, in the community as well. And then in-house, um, and this is part of a Charles Dahlke grant, which is happening in all of our branches. Uh, we offered a bilingual story time um, in partnership uh, with um, some local um, school and school teachers and just so well received to be able to offer that to the community. So that's been really fantastic. Hearing really good feedback about that. Uh, we have Jim already mentioned the upcoming book sale. <laughs> Oh, do we? <laughs> <laughs> so we're really excited about that. Um, and just a lot of great summer programming happening. Um, and we're still keeping some things uh, in-house, but again, lots out in the community, including a great partnership with Chaska Parks and Rec, doing a teen book club in the parks. Cool. And our thanks for our friends group for helping to support the books for that, but that is going over huge. Um, the registration is full, and we're just... Not only is it a great partnership with the city, but it's it's more importantly that we're connecting with that age group and mm -hmm. hopefully connecting them back to our, you know, to our library and what we can offer in our librarians so that they can build those relationships. So really excited about that. Thank you. And then we'll have the Western District. Yep. Thank you. So on the note of book sales is this Saturday at Waconia. Uh, we have our second of the three book sales for the year. So it'll be from 9 to nine in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. <clears throat> Next door at City Hall, we borrow conference room and uh, senior center space to be able to really spread out. So that'll be good. And then um, in two weeks following that, the last weekend, the same weekend as the best book sale ever in Chaska, <laughs> is we have the um, close but maybe second second best book sale at Watertown. Um, and that's on the Rails to Trails weekend, and we do this a couple of times, as you all do as well, uh, to try and capitalize on the energy that's already in the downtown area. And uh, that's a three-day book sale, Friday um, afternoon, all day Saturday. Uh, and then um, Monday afternoon and evening. And uh, additional fun for that um, is on the same day as the opening of the book sale on Friday afternoon is um, just part of our rhythm of our performances for the summer is Friday afternoon is typically the performance afternoon at Watertown Branch and we'll have the Rowe family simmer, singers uh, performing in the same room as the book sale uh, in City Hall. So there will be music and book buying all going on at the same time. And then um, along with the Chaska branch, oh, yes, thank you. is um, we again were, and I noted this I think in the written report, is Twin City Public Television through MELSA mm -hmm. um, last year and again this year offered to come out to some of the uh, MELSA libraries. And last year Waconia branch had been selected and uh, this year they offered to come to Chaska Branch as well as Watertown Branch. And uh, so we're fitting in on that same Friday afternoon, a triple header um, <laughs> with book sale, row family singers, and then a uh, costume character from Twin City Public Televisions. And they'll also have some craft learning stations that will be set up around as well. So the Chaska event is Saturday the 22nd. Saturday the 22nd. 10.30. And then the uh, um, Watertown one is on Friday the 28th, right? So um, lots going on there. And um, speaking of Watertown, Jody and I this evening will be going to the Watertown City Council for um, the third of the Western ones of our State of the Library presentation. I did have a very nice conversation with um, with Jake, the city administrator, about the hours, the change of hours, which you all approved last month. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. 
Um, and so he was absolutely very positive in our conversation and we'll introduce that topic tonight to the city councilors as well. And then from there, once I talk with city council, then we'll start doing our um, marketing and um, public information mm -hmm. regarding that. And, uh, and I have not had a chance to um, follow up on the Norwood Young America budget, carpet, that whole conversation we had, and not because it's not important, but this simply it's just been one of the many casualties of work not done because of the severe staffing issues in the Western branches, and just been doing desk coverage, simple as that. So. Thank you. Yep. Um, next, Matt, do you have anything for Melsa? Well, this is specific on Melsa, but I did have a chance to be out at Waconia branch. Um, yes. And What's the dude's name? Thank you, sir. The foundation guy. Oh, Dave DeBear. Dave DeBear. Who's our friend's president. Yep. It was so, I, mean, I don't think I've ever met him, which is cool. And <laughs> he turned on his Brooklyn accent immediately when he found out my daughter Brooklyn was with me. Um, it was just so funny to see those guys interact. But um, I just, there's a level of emotion that comes with reading through this when you have a three and seven year old that utilize the libraries. And I scolded my sister today. She says, I haven't been in a library in six months. And I went to the library today with her son. They live in Iowa. <laughs> and I just, like, as we're looking through budgets and, and different things, and I know that we're getting the attaboys and high fives for all the things that are happening at the state government bringing funding to library. Like, there's very few places that are the meeting place for people. And as we're talking about what the government center looks in the future, and Jim, you've underscored it many, many times that we have to be intentional that there's these places for people to gather and meet and be. And I think sometimes it's an afterthought. It's not an afterthought for the people around the table. But I think sometimes it's an afterthought for the general population. You take it for granted unless it's there. I mean, Dunn Brothers has long been a meeting place, and now it's not. And I find myself, if it wasn't for 41 traffic, I'd probably miss it more. It's like, oh, let's just meet up at, oh, we can't go to Dunn Brothers. And so I think the weight of some of that falls on the libraries, and I think some of those places go away. So mm -hmm. whether it's our role and our presence at Melsa or whether it's here, like there's meaningful work being done, and it touches me, especially when I look through the eyes of a three-year-old and a seven-year-old. And I get to go back and tell her that you met him Wanda Gorman, who is like one of her superstars. <laughs> uh, the, the guy that did the uh, illustration for it, he also wrote another book that's near and dear to my heart. Do you remember the name of it? Christian Robinson. He wrote the book, bestseller, You Matter. And so that's been my tagline for years. And so that was uh, when you said that, uh, I was doing it on my phone, like yes. who's the person that illustrated it? Huh. Um, I've had that book on her mantle for, since I ran for election, so. Cool. Play Thanks. Up. And uh, finally we have Library Foundation. That's me, huh? Hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have two figures for you. I have uh, the business account the amount is $18,500.56. And uh, it's been the business account is supposed to be held down to 10000 So we'll move the 8000 back to that. The total amount without that 8000 is $130,423.56. That's in the money market. And... Um, my interest in the um, Norwood Young America is a chess club, of course, and uh, it's really blossomed. And we have some good leaders and some really uh, very expertise people who have really developed. Uh, one man plays a couple games every day, or, and if he doesn't get that down, he feels uh, neglected. So I'm looking forward to um, this month uh, coming up with uh, a plan for the Stiftung Fest uh, chess tournament. And I'm very pleased and grateful. Thank you. And I think you guys got a whole bunch of media packets at the end mm -hmm. to see your announcement. Correct, yes. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, anything else? If not, we can uh, have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. Yes.